And what are your views on the 70% cuts in the community relations budget? Well, I think the 70% cut has effectively gutted the budget. It's left it basically with nothing, um, which and is a very, very tiny amount of money when you think of the scale of, of the budget for the whole of the Department of Education. So there must be something more to it than than, than what the, the, the excuse that was given, um, because it's not about savings. It's certainly not about efficiency savings. It's not about a, it's not about making economic savings, um, because actually what happens in the long run is that these cuts will show up in other uh, departments' budgets. So it's going to show up in the criminal justice and policing budget because of conflict at interface areas. It's going to show up in the health budget as young people um, suffer from mental ill health as they're struggling to cope with stress and, and, and tensions within the community, it'll show up in social services budgets, it'll show up in social development budgets, as we fail to deal with segregation and poverty and all those other issues that exist within the community. Crazy and very, very dangerous because of the things that I was saying about, you know, we desperately need, even though a lot, so many people think just because we have the peace process on way and all going very well, that, that community relations we're actually more divided more segregated than ever before you know we've Protestant leisure centres, Catholic leisure centres, we need actually to, to genuinely sign up to a shared future. You know, we've waited on seeing when this cohesion and sharing and integration strategy has been published. It still hasn't come out yet. You know, where are we going on a shared future? And if we don't start on the youth service, we're just storing up a time bomb for the years ahead in community relations. It'll be a disaster. It'll have a huge impact. I mean, what, what is going to stop happening is very necessary and very important work on the ground in interface areas and in other parts of Northern Ireland where there are community relations issues amongst young people is going to stop. And we could pay a very heavy price for that. This is a budget we can ill afford to do away with. It saves lives, it saves communities, anxiety, and it creates new relationships which haven't been possible years ago. The, the, um, I think what got people was the scale, you know, 70%, that's a huge amount of, of, uh, of cuts that it really undermines. I do a lot of work, as you know, uh, with people that get benefit from it. And this is Sophie. Hello. Hi. Sophie's been up uh, having a look today about, you know, how Parliament works. And she was slightly unimpressed with politicians fighting with each other today. Is that right? What did you think of them? They were very intense and I thought they'd get along a lot better, but they didn't really. Yeah, so there's a lot of discussion and, and you know, part of it is that if we're going to sort out real problems in this uh, country we're going to have to start agreeing with each other properly, not just lip service. Mm -hmm. And I think that the community relations budget is particularly important, particularly for people at your age. Well this budget is only a tiny amount of money but in reality there's a huge impact when it's been spent because what it does is it teaches tolerance and respect which has to be at the heart of where we want to take Northern Ireland in the future. Taking this budget away is actually inviting trouble. It's handing over control of certain communities to the distance. It's saying to homophobic people who want to beat up gay men and women it's okay to do so. So what I'm about here is saying to those people in the executive, Sinn Féin and the DUP in particular, who seem to think this isn't a priority, to get them to understand that this small amount of money literally saves lives. And we need to invest in a shared society and community relations work where it's been done on the ground. And so what would you propose should happen then? What do you think? Well, well I think there's got to be, uh, but this happen, has to happen on both and all sides, you know, that you really have to get serious and understand the other person's point of view. Uh, I mean, we've had a number of things, you know, like the Bloody Sunday, uh, the, you know, the Savile Tribunal. It was interesting how people responded to that and how people responded to the response, all of which was quite positive and I think it is a platform for moving forward. Now, now it's not to say that there aren't some serious issues, you know, that we have to deal with, but you, the people think that we're up here getting round the table and thrashing things out and actually we're not, we're up here bickering, would that be right? Yeah. yeah. So <laughs> some realism has to go into politics, everybody's point of view has to be acknowledged and respected, there has to be give and take on all sides and ultimately what we've got to do is keep this thing going long enough for you lot to take over. Well, do what you're doing now, lobbying, writing, emailing uh, MLAs, getting on Facebook, building up, um, you know, building a lot of support behind you actually to say, no, this is wrong, we need to, we need to do something about this. 
I would love to see an executive, and that means every government department, every minister, I would like to see an executive focus that prioritises funding for community relations budgets, community relations programmes, schools programmes that work towards a shared future that we all want to live in. You start off for the, from a very basic question, and that question is, what type of society do we want to live in? And then ask if our budgets and our, our programme for government is geared towards achieving that type of society. I would say no, it's absolutely not at the minute, so we need to work towards that. And what would you say to the young people of Northern Ireland to give them reassurance over these devastating budget cuts? Because keep up the fight. Your voice is being heard uh, at Stormont. Protests like this, get on Facebook and your social networking sites and keep the campaign going. Build up support, get more of your friends out, get emailing me, Basel, uh, every MLA uh, in here and make your voice heard and start to do that. There's a run up to an assembly election within the next year. That's kind of a big impact on policy. Try and get it into parties' manifestos and keep the fight going. Groups. Well, unfortunately, um, each minister in the executive is responsible for their own budget. So this, the responsibility for restoring funding to community relations within your sector lies with the, the Minister for Education, which is Katrina Ryan. I would say do not give up. I would say keep on lobbying, because what you're doing is absolutely right. You are trying to create the type of society that we want to live in. Maybe we could look at other departments and how they are living up to a shared future and how they are directing their funding uh, sources towards that, but unfortunately the responsibility for this lies with one minister. Oh, there's a there's, I think there's a real problem that in the last 10 years we've sort of wasted our time. We haven't been building the peace, you know, we haven't. We got, and if you, want, if you ask me, I think that the people have moved on faster than the politicians. And so 